Hi everyone! Spring has finally arrived in the temperate regions of the Northern Hemisphere, and with it comes the awakening of a species we absolutely adore. Witness the rise of the mighty Formica rufa after their winter sleep. Let's dig in! We headed back to the woods to revisit the nests we spotted last year while preparing our previous video about the Formica rufa. By the way, if you missed that video, you can check it out here, or you can find the link down in the description. In it, we introduced and explained as much as we could fit in about this fascinating species, so make sure to check it out first if you'd like more context, and then come back to this one. Now, back to the woods and our rufas. First off, it's fascinating to see that all the domes were quite small, as they had been damaged by the winter's harsh conditions, like wind, wild pigs, rain or snow. In some nests, we can even start seeing the wooden trunk that was buried months ago. The rufas have a lot of rebuilding to do to repair their domes. Since these ants live in a federation of nests within the woods, we were able to observe several colonies. Interestingly, not all the nests awaken at the same speed. Some nests seemed somewhat sleepy, showing little activity, while others were already bustling with life. We noticed that nests with better sun exposure woke up faster. The first ants to emerge soak up the sun's energy with their bodies and bring it back down into the nest, spreading the warmth like living heat cells. A lack of sun, and therefore heat, slows down the ants' metabolism, which is one of their weaknesses. For example, this wood louse was a quick snack for the rufas last summer when their energy levels were high. Now, while they seem interested in it, they simply don't have the energy to catch it. After their diapause, or winter sleep, they rely on easy, sugar-rich foods instead of chasing difficult-to-catch prey. In some sunlit nests, however, the ants are already hunting. Like this beetle here, the rufas have already attacked its wings to prevent it from escaping. Same goes for this moth here. Of course, scavenging is also a great option. A headless hornet, for instance, makes for a welcome meal after a tough winter. The woods where we filmed don't have nests exceeding one million individuals. Research from Finland in 1987 revealed that larger colonies with over a million workers can warm their nests after winter without relying on sunlight. In these colonies, the nest temperature remains stable around 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit during spring and summer, even when night temperatures drop below the freezing point. Smaller colonies, however, depend heavily on sunlight for warmth, while larger colonies generate heat internally through the ants' metabolism and clustering behavior. This social thermoregulation is key to ensuring temperature stability in large rufa nests. Further research in 2020 revealed that anthill size plays a critical role in nest thermoregulation. And taller anthills have significantly better survival rates than smaller ones. Unfortunately, when human activity forces these ants to build smaller anthills, we inadvertently endanger their species. And that's it for today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell icon so you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.